Hello, MUS 2020 students. This is part two of the audio effects video series. This time we're going to be talking about timbre effects. Timbre effects are going to change the sound of the incoming audio signal, altering the color of the sound. These will be the most familiar to most people as they're very similar to classic guitar pedals. I'm going to start with the chorus and ensemble effect. Before I do that though, remember I'm using a sawtooth wave, which sounds like that. But here is chorus and ensemble. What you're hearing is two different delay lines that are represented by these two waveforms that are being used to create the effect of multiple players for a single part when I'm in classic mode, adding vibrato in vibrato mode, or by using a third delay similar to kind of the classic 70s pedal sound in ensemble mode. Really, really cool. All modes offer an optional high pass filter that you can enable down here. And all of them have the ability to change the rate, which is the speed of the effect. The amount, which is the depth of the effect. and feedback. Which can give you some really, really crazy sounds. Uh, if you need to, you can use output to apply more gain to the signal. Uh, that's helpful if it's a little bit on the quiet side. You can also adjust the warmth knob to add just a little bit of additional filtering and distortion. And of course, dry or wet will affect the balance between the unprocessed signal coming from your audio device and the signal coming from the effect. Very cool. Next up, let's take a look at erosion. So erosion is a signal degrader. You can select the type, of noise, wide noise, or sign, and then give it a frequency, width, and amount. This will modulate the input. You can hear as I increase the amount, I get just a little bit of extra dirt in the sound. And that changes dramatically based on what sound type I'm using, noise, wide noise, or sign. Now, as a general rule, I found that with noise and wide noise, lower frequency values tend to be more pronounced, but with sign, uh, you're going to want to have more of an amount than anything else. Let's move on to the phaser and flanger. Like chorus ensemble, this is essentially a combo of two classic modulation effects into one unit. And the phaser and the flanger together are very, very much a classic guitar pedal combo. So choose your mode. Uh, phaser is going to use notch filters to phase shift the input signal back onto itself, sort of similar to modulating a bunch of all-pass filters. And this is going to emphasize a little bit of swirling in the higher frequencies. Flanger uses a time-modulated delay to create a continually changing comb filter type sound.
That is so cool. I, I really do love that one. Uh, finally, we have Doubler. Uh, Doubler creates the effect of doubling multiple stacked retakes of a track onto itself uh, by modulating time-delayed copies of itself. This is very similar to the technique where if you're recording and you want to really have a thick guitar sound, you'll record the guitarist doing one pass, put that on the left, and then do another pass and put it on the right. Here. You're going to want to play around with the time parameter to adjust the time delay uh, of the doubler effect. You're going to want to play with the rate and the amount in particular so that you don't get, you know, really weird. values that sound kind of on the weird side or that change in pitch. So those will need to be set independently. Uh, as with the chorus and ensemble, the rate controls the speed. Uh, you can set it directly in hertz or you can sync it up to the tempo of live. Amount controls the depth of the effect. Feedback adds feedback, which is really cool with the flanger, just FYI. Oh, yeah. Love that crazy sci-fi sound. Uh, then output you can use to give it a little bit more gain or to cut the amount of volume coming out of the device. Uh, warmth, again, adds just a little bit of distortion and uh, filtering. And then dry-wet controls the amount of the dry, unprocessed signal versus the processed signal. <laughs> That is so much fun. <laughs> but it is not as fun as our next device, Redux. So Redux is how you make things old school. Uh, this is a bit crusher. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the rate knob here. And by using that, you downsample, which means that you're reducing the signal quality from, you know, a wonderful, pristine audio down into something that sounds more like it came off of a Nintendo, a Super Nintendo, or even like an Atari 2600. And it does that by reducing the amount of samples that are played every second. Just don't go too low, otherwise you'll lose all definition. You can add a little bit of jitter to add just a touch of uh, noise to the resampled clock. Uh, this makes it a little bit more random. By introducing a noise signal into it. Uh, pre and post enable filters before or after the resampling. This can reduce the uh, amount of distortion that you get. Now, over here on the bits side, this is where you have to be careful. Bits is reducing the bit depth. And to make a long story short, that corresponds directly to volume. So, if you take it all the way down on a continually playing or varying signal, you can accidentally blow your speakers up. Be very careful with that. Uh, shape will vary the shape of the quantizer, so higher values will be a little bit better for smaller changes in volume. And then a DC shift can be used as well. What that does is it just applies a slight amount of amplitude offset 
and that will make it so that you can go down. To lower values before it cuts out entirely. Um, again, be very careful when you're playing with the bits themselves. Uh, that knob can be problematic. Finally, with the timbre effects, let's take a look at the saturator. This is a wave shaper. Uh, so what it does is it maps the input signal to whatever the curve is that you define here. You select the type of curve you want to use, so analog clips, off sign, medium curve, hard curve, all the way through to Wave Shaper. And then you adjust the parameters with the drive knob. You can change adding a DC offset. You can set the color base. the frequency, the width, and the depth, and get different sounds out of that. Uh, if you really want to go crazy, I recommend going full wave shaper mode, in which case, there it is. You can get some really crazy sounds. Um, also with that, if you do things like digital clip, you can get harsher sounds as opposed to something like, say, sinusoidal fold. Although that one will depend heavily on the, uh, the frequency. And the frequency's relationship to the note that you're playing. So that can get a little technical but it's very fun to play with and create some very interesting sounds.